And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Renekton Gnosis. We're going to be playing another Buried Sun Disk deck. We only played the first one. The, our very first deck with this new expansion was a Buried Sun Disk deck, and that's the, the last one that we've done. And I've wanted to play another one, so we're going to try it again. Um, we got our 40 Sharima cards, and uh, I'm only going to go with one Buried Sun Disk right now, less... Uh, less landmark removal and everything and and uh, we'll just go with the one but we're gonna try Gnosis instead of Azir this time um you know just having Gnosis be super big and everything the um these kind of decks have I have kind of struggled a little bit on my top end so I was thinking that maybe Gnosis on the top end could be really cool we're gonna put Ruin Runner in here also this card's just been incredibly overperforming in every single deck um also siphoning strikes because both of our champions both of our champions want to be large, and both of our champions care about striking, right? Rennington needs to deal 12 damage to level up, so Siphoning Strike helps it deal more damage. Um, Gnosis wants to strike for 10 plus damage, so Siphoning Strike helps with that too. So we're going to have the, both those with our champions. We'll have Golden Ambassador in here drawing our champions, making them larger. Um, I am playing Devoted Council because I have kind of struggled against aggro decks with these Sharima decks. I'm going to try Devoted Council and Spirit Fire. And if we can get either Renekton or Gnosis to level up, then that two Nexus health, uh, healing each time with the Devo Devoted Council could be really important. You know, so I just want something to get some Nexus healing in the late game. Early early game this is just a one six blocker, not a bad blocker. Early game, uh, kind of you know, kind of is the same role as Azir in that early game. Um, then we got some because we're playing Renekton, we got to get that Challenger stuff. So we got a couple of Ruthless Predators, a couple of Exhaust. I've also been pretty impressed with Shapestone, and we should have Buried Sun Disc quite a bit. Um, so we should be able to turn on Shapestone just fine. Um, and then that's kind of our deck, and then just some other good Sharima stuff around it. So we'll go ahead and give this a try. Renekton Nosses. Ooh. I don't like this. I don't like elusives. I'm just trying to do my cool stuff. I don't want elusives. Okay, we probably need... Like, we'll probably find more of those vulnerable type stuff, but we probably need to be able to curve out a little better. Mm. Wow. We got our turn one buried sun disc. That was pretty lucky. First draw. Yeah, Spirit Fire would definitely be a good card to find. Alright, I think I want the Exhaust because it costs 1 mana instead of the Predator that costs 2 mana. The plus 2 plus 0 isn't that necessary, but you know, I, I want Challenger stuff with Renekton. See what I've learned? It's a little awkward if, if I want to play Rennington plus Exhaust here on turn four, then I can't play the Xenotype Researchers on three. But I do really want the Xenotype Researchers in play. Not only is Xenotype Researchers a three three, so it matches up with Ballistic Bot. It also like you want to play this as early as possible to give yourself the more chances to be lucky and draw something against the plus three plus three. And also you want to play that before predict. So we're kind of in a rough spot here. I guess. I guess I just passed though. I don't know. I want to play this researchers, but I really want to have challenge to go with Renekton next turn. If I do not play the Chronomancer right now, I could have two challenge cards next turn. I can have the Ruthless Predator uh, to go along with the Chronomancer. And that I don't I guess I probably don't need that. Hmm. Alright, we'll play this. Alright, Spirit Fire. Ruin Runner's cool too, but I want that Spirit Fire. Alright, I'm I'm glad they didn't attack with Ballistic Pod. I was thinking they were going to. I'm glad they did not. Surrender. 
Um, what rank am I? I'm at, I'm just in, what is it? Is it diamond or platinum? Whatever you get reset to after masters, I'm in that one. I haven't ranked, I haven't changed ranks. So I'm, I'm somewhere in there. And I don't know what I am. I'm, you know, I don't know, either two, three, or four in that. I, I don't know what. Okay. So they discarded stress testing. Yuck. All right, so Siphon, or Spirit Fire, whatever, like, that card's going to be pretty good here this next turn. I don't have anything to challenge right now. What's your champion spell again? Oh, yeah, it's Siphoning Strike. That's a great champion spell. It can be undone. So my plan is to play the Spirit Fire on their turn. And maybe like Siphoning Strike this turn. At least that was my plan was to Siphoning Strike this turn. Maybe it's just better to play Gnosis. Well, let's see. No, I should probably play this, but none of these are that good to hit. Alright, maybe we we'll just play Gnosis. I'm worried about um, suit up. Suit up's troublesome. I'm not worried about Poro Cannon. So that's three damage right now. Four damage right now. I mean, they can definitely win this game. Right now, they're still hitting me for four. If they have suit up, that's more damage. And then if they just have burn spells, right? Like hitting me for four down to seven, that I can definitely die to mystic shots and get excited. This is not GGs. Just drew suit up. Yeah, it looks like we're probably dead. <laughs> to say, like, my bonus deck is really good. Like, all elusives and how cheap all these cards are. I will still be very happy whenever Wiggly Burblefish gets nerfed. Hasn't been yet. I'll still be very happy when it does. Well, the reason, so, yeah, and so that was perfect. They found the Mystic Shot. The, the reason not to suit up Fizz, so it was it was correct not to suit up the Fizz, because the Fizz was already dealing one damage. So you take something that's doing zero damage, and you suit up that thing that's doing zero damage, so you get, you get four additional damage instead of getting three additional damage. If they would have suit up the Fizz, that Mystic Shot would not have killed me. Why do we not have Atrocity? Because we don't play Shadow Isles. I don't know if that gives me lethal. No, probably it probably doesn't give me lethal. Okay. Um another Shreema deck. They got Lucian. One, two, three, five. I think one, two, three, five is solid. Not not champions, but I mean I Rune Runner is basically a champion.
think we'll just go buried. Actually, we'll probably just go buried sun this turn one. Okay, never mind. They played Doom Keeper, so I gotta play Doom Keeper. Because it is nice. It is good to have the Chronomancer after the researchers. If you can. Get the countdown started. Let's get it started. Always yeah, I I am also I'm with you there, man, Piggy. I'm su surprised they didn't nerf anything with that Twist of Fate Fizz deck. I, I mean, I think it's Burble Fish, right? Like, I think that's the card that should be nerfed myself um but I, yeah i was surprised also that there was no purple fish nerfing i'm not sure Sand and blood. all right so we got three random allies in our deck got that plus three plus three Not bad. We got two cards out of them for our one. Probably the Golden Ambassador. Let's get a champion. But I guess Golden Ambassador. It's hard to play Golden Ambassador with all these Ruin Runners and stuff, too, though. This is annoying. Because, of course, each Grizzled Ranger attack gets a Sand Soldier. Well, yeah, Twisted Fate's a really strong champion, but, I mean, the champions are supposed to be good. I mean, I don't, I don't, like, Twisted Fate's amazing, but I don't know if it needs a nerf just because it's, it's great, right? Like, you don't, just because a card's really good doesn't mean it needs a nerf, but some, but have, playing zero mana, three one elusives, like, that's broken, right? Like, that's, that's a, just a broken mechanic. You shouldn't have zero mana threats that deal a lot of damage and are elusive and you can't block. Like, that's, there's something wrong there. Twisted Fate is just is a you know really solid champion, but you should you should have good champions, right? Like that's it's a fun card to play. It's exciting. It doesn't need a nerf necessarily. Five, eight, ten, eleven. Okay, never mind. So we're gonna take eleven, but this is me taking nine. The order is given. Tell the people what you have seen today. You lost. Reddington, I need some I need some ways to challenge. I need to challenge this Azir. All of this is ours. That's the wrong champion. I need to I wanted a second Reddington so I could play like a bigger Reddington, have this one be the Reddington champion spell. I'm most likely playing Spear of Fire this next turn. Not having any removal, you know, like, we don't have any, either, any of our four vulnerable cards or our three, like, Siphon Strikes. No, no removal for this Azir. Makes, has made life much more difficult. Well, at least it's a good Hourglass. <clears throat> Keeps them from getting those attacks. Not 
lets them use a combat spell, but it count. But the reason to block, there wouldn't be much reason to block because uh, they get the count combat spell. But the reason to block is to get slay stuff for the Gnosis. See what we see. I'm blocking these things. I think I'm taking one. I think I just take the one. I mean, I guess I maybe I just block here. Yeah, actually, I definitely block there. Because <clears throat> that thing's gonna take two damage at end of turn. That's right. <sighs> Stop. This fight is over. I think there's some value in the 4 mana 5-3 that gives vulnerable. Absolutely, that's a good card. Um, it would have, we'd have to, uh, you know, like, we'd have to play it over, like, the Golden Ambassador. Uh, you know, we're obviously not going to take out right next to and then I don't want to play just, like, you know, 8, 4 drops, or whatever, but, um... Listen to me. Could really use some chowder. You gotta be kidding me. Seriously? Okay, okay, we didn't have any of the vulnerable stuff in the opening hand. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say that I, if we did, I really re re regret mulliganing it. Yeah, like this kind of stuff, like Ruthless Predator. LeBlanc, Silva. Like, Ruin Runner and Sivir are, like, their two biggest threats. They have Spell Shield, so the vulnerable doesn't necessarily help against them. I'll mulligan these two. We'll keep the Shapestone. I don't know if I've really seen House Spider too much in this deck list, but that was a really good answer to my Rock Hopper. Oh, would you look at this place? I of course don't want to. I don't want to challenge the Spiderling. Obviously, I, I don't want to trade a three-one for a one-one to begin with. But then also, um, I want Rannington to be able to challenge stuff. So we'll have Rannington challenge the Spiderling. Um, good draw here with the Exhaust. We have Shapestone or Exhaust available. And they're kind of a tough spot. I could see, like, they probably pass here. I could, I guess I could see also passing. Okay, now they didn't pass, so let's definitely not pass either. We can trade a 3-1 for... We can trade one of our 3-1s for the 2-2, two -two, that's fine. Card's pretty good. All right, Rennington's halfway to leveling up. Seeing tombs, towns, and everything in between. Chase what you want without mercy. Hmm. Unfortunately, Rennington has to... Uh, it's only 11 out of 12 anyway. I was going to say Rennington has to survive. So this is... 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12... 12 damage so far. See what we see. The 
The best lies are beautiful. I go, I go. Down to two. You could try the I probably should just throw the shape zone out here to just make it zero. Yeah, I should just play the shape zone. I was thinking like protect against whirling death or something like you know like that kind of card. Yeah, you know, like a whirling death with the right of negation. Um, I probably or maybe just let it happen though. Just let this happen. No, if we if we right negation, they just go down to two, so they don't they don't die. They take an, an, an extra three and go to two. So it's not lethal, but we would keep the three one alive. Um, I guess it's worth it. Uh, kill a mana gem. Because like my other big threat, like they they have like other cards like this, other fight spells like this, but my other big threat is the six four. With spell shield, and I draw so many cards. Am I supposed to be playing this Preservarium? Alright, Devoted Devote Council not looking so great. That card's perfect against Ruin Runner. My little one sixes. They're not easy to kill. And we get the win. One and two. Oh no, Fior Shen. Fior Shen's super good. But we got we got cards. <laughs> Alright, love exhaust. Uh, we don't need devoted council. And I don't know if we really even need Dune Keeper just being like a one mana two one. I don't know if that's like really what the game's going to be a boot. So I'm going to go ahead and mulligan it. Wow, buried sun disc. We have had turn one sun disc all the time. I'm pretty lucky with that. Let's go with the Hoppa. Hopper makes Fiora a little worse. Their plans turn three Fiora. No, nope, yeah, they wouldn't just Bright Steel Protector. He, that's the good part about the Hoppa, is it kind of forces them to throw out like a Bright Steel Protector to take that vulnerable. Just also pass. All right, we got Rennington. Yeah, they just pass again. So I could just pass again and have them just waste four mana. Um, or I go like this. And then they play Sharp Sight. And then it trades with my Rennington. Maybe I just do that. Um, you think I take the mana? It's... Yeah, I could see, I could see taking the mana. All right. Hamster also says pass. Okay, we'll we'll take the mana. So barriers make siphoning strike a little worse. Um. All right, so we're gonna have to like plus three, plus one this Rennington. We live in hollow times. And I guess I got a plus three, plus one, and then siphoning strike. Probably would have worked. But I like just... We got 6-6 six, six Renekton now, so that's nice. Okay, so they're, they're playing they're playing perfectly around Shapestone. They're playing a Shapestone plus... So you know, now they, they're Sharp Sight. Single combat. Mm. Okay. I don't think it's not worth playing the Ruthless Predator. 
it would save the golden ambassador, but that's not worth it. Not when I have 6-6 six, six Renekton. Nope, no, no Azur in this list, just Renekton and Gnosis. I go, I go. go with this. Yeah. That goes to four power, or four health. Basically, I have to use two spells. If I play Exhaust here, I'm not going to be playing Siphoning Strike, but maybe Exhaust is worth it. If we do drag with the 3 1. Yeah, let's just do that. So we're going to have. We're going to have halfway for Rennington level up. Two worlds, one balance. This will be full Rennington level up. Which is why I didn't want to play the exhaust, because I want to be able to play the. Siphoning Strike. Awesome. Or I guess I've been... I was told that it's Renekton, not Renekton. I like I like saying Renekton. Renekton's fun to say. I like that. But I guess I was told it's Renekton. I don't like Renekton as much. I don't know. It's more harsh of an... on Renekton. Always two steps ahead. I like Renekton. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool level up. Agree. So they have to have... Stuff. Let's play Gnosis. You can definitely use, you know, like, Repost and other spells. Like, they can they can kill these things with, like, Fiora's brutal. But... Whoa. You don't see Tasty Fae Folk too much. If we level up Gnosis, we get the Sun Disc. I have never done the Sun Disc thing yet. Still. Still waiting. Put them down. Face your end. If I play the other exhaust. I give the Tasty Fae Folk minus two, so then they can't block it, but then they just play, you know, any of their pump spells, and then they, they can still block it. Um, but it does force them to use those pump spells in order to get a block in. So, maybe that's worth it? Maybe that's worth it. Yeah, it's just one mana. It's like right now it's not right like so if they want to block a fear or something, they gotta use repost or whatever, and they're and so then they're using that like repost on that tasty faithful instead of on something more valuable. Counter and strike. Yeah, at least force them to do that. Who are you? <laughs> this is plus three plus three this round, right? Yeah, just this round. Rhino Negation, probably fine. Okay, so if they play, if they're playing as the 9-drop next turn, 9-drop's kind of brutal. Right stop's like, Consider the consequences. I'm gonna can take it. Rely on you to keep us safe. Right stop's like Concerted Strike and those kind of cards. All right, and I'll just pass. I will have the mana for Ruin Runner plus Ride Negation next turn. I guess I won't have the mana for Ruin Runner and Siphoning Truck and Ride Negation, though. I won't be able to do all those. Soldier, to me. Sand and trouble far as the eye can see. We're so close on the Sun Disk. I, I, I just want to level up the Sun Disk. 
I guess I also want to win. Uh... The land obeys. Sand and blood! Out of the way! I am their end. You're strange. So what's the plan? Opponent. Post and concerted strike. Gross. That that keeps them alive. Yeah, that keeps them alive. striking for nine but it does it does make sure that we're not getting barriered they're back to 17 with healing for 14 there that was a perfect turn for them now dealing with like the nine nine and stuff's gonna be tough but you know we got this huge gnosis if the gnosis does strike them or strike anything basically out here you're moving or you're dead um I don't think Gnosis works too well with barriers, like against barriers. Might as well play this first, though, right? No. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that there was a, there was something there that was like behind, like where my camera is. No. Oh no, do we get to restore the sun disk? Hopefully. Does it do this? Before the game ends? Yay! Alright, I hadn't seen this before. Awesome! Let's go! Alright, that was cool. Sweet. The sun disk has been restored. Oh, we got a mirror match. They're going to be trying to... And they're they're pretty good. Like, their champions are... They got some champion mastery going on over there. And, yeah, they're going to be trying to do the same kind of thing. Um, I do not want to keep three two drops. Let's get rid of... I think I want to keep the Rock Hoppers. I guess I'm going to get rid of the Chronomancer. So, go Rock Hopper, Rock Hopper, Ambassador. I think I kind of want that. I think I want these Rock Hoppers for this matchup. Hey, buried sun disc, turn one. You got it. See what we see. Always forward. Ow, ow. One mana spells are good. So I'm spending two mana next turn on the Hoppa. So get a one mana spell to go with the Renekton. Now we go Hoppa, so they go Renekton next turn. And I don't want to meet whatever woke you up. We give that vulnerable. If it's made of sand, I can light it. It can be undone. I will run you over. Well, we're definitely winning this game right now because our Sun Disk is at 22 and theirs is at 23, so 
pretty big advantage for us. How we're ahead there on the Sun Disk. I don't know if my opponent can possibly uh, do anything about that or like ever catch up or anything. That's that seems like that's just too big of a, a hurdle to overcome. I like the opponent's deck quite a bit, though. Very similar to mine. Both very cool. That seemed like the obvious thing for them to have, since they, you know, threw down in front of that vulnerable, right in front of my Renekton attacking. Where I go, carnage follows. I'm gonna go Golden Ambassador. Let's see. So, if I go Golden Ambassador, they go the minus two. I can still plus three it and kill. No, I wouldn't be able to plus three and kill Rennington. But I guess it's the same as the Xenotype. So if they have the plus two either way. Or I guess I just go Ruin Runner. Yeah, we just go Ruin Runner and we just trade. They had all the Dune Keepers. They had all three Dune Keepers. Those things are so aggressive. So aggressive. So my double spell is with Researcher and Council, and I guess that's what I'm doing. I think I want multiple bodies in play. These aggressive Dune Keepers. You never forgot us. We will not forget you. Cool. So 19 and 20, we still ahead. All right, so Ambassador is drawing Gnosis. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. I run the bloody path through Sharima. The war for Sharima is over. We have all won. Doom Keeper. Do this one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can still do both of those. All of this is ours. Bask in the starlight. Oh. Who's with me? Is it me? For our city. Yeah. I'm hoping to level up Renekton this turn. Let's see, they have the plus three, plus one. I will not. But also, if all their stuff dies, it's another way for me not to. So they take 11, go down to seven. I assume they're going to play something else here. All right, no, maybe not. Well, that's too bad. Ooh, I like the hourglass draw. Finally, Nasus, I hunted you down. I came to reconcile with you. This too shall end. You try my patience. Save it. We'll come back with eight power next turn. Give them something to Oh no! Their sun does a 16 now, mine's at 17. How can we ever win now? They're ahead. Oh no. How how could we ever, ever win now? I don't think I really attack here. Um, I like Gnosis and I like Hourglass. I like them both. 
Gnosis makes it more likely that we... I'm going to say Gnosis. That we level up our champions, probably. No. That gives their spell shield. I was kidding earlier, but if they have like this could be game. I wish I, I wish I would take an hourglass, right? Like I, I need hourglass to stop that. Yeah, they have the ride negation to stop mine. This, too shall end. this is pretty bad. Yeah, I really wish I would have taken the Ancient Hourglass that could have um, canceled that out. But, you know, maybe I go Hourglass, maybe they ride a negation my Hourglass, and then my Siphoning Strike happens, and then my Gnosis is larger than theirs. Yuck. Worst possible draw. Doomkeeper just does nothing. You know, not, not against... Gnosis with the minus one minus zero is like this just does nothing. Just a, a generic one one. Oh man. That card's a lot better than Doomkeeper. Well, this is too bad. This is too bad. Um, I think that. Okay, so my biggest regret this game was probably um, we can always rely on you oh, maybe I should have taken that 6-5 Golden Ambassador. I kind of took that card too quickly. What? They just had that in hand to just pass priority to me? Are you kidding me? So I could have just taken the pass. What are they... What? What are they doing? I guess I should have just taken the pass. I figured they didn't have anything like that. Why did they just not do that the first time? Anyway, I don't I don't know what they're doing. But anyway, um, my biggest regret that game was whenever with the Renekton. Uh, my whenever I went with the six power Renekton and challenged, and I attacked with other stuff to kind of clear the board to help out my one drop. That was the mistake was attacking with the other stuff. I should have kept. Um, I shouldn't have attacked with everything. I should have kept things back, let them have some stuff alive, because basically they traded everything off, they didn't play anything else afterwards, so I didn't get to Siphoning Strike with that Rennington. I needed to just uh, try to Siphoning Strike with that Rennington afterwards. Um, it did look like maybe they had the right of negation, they would have countered the Siphoning Strike, but but that's what I needed to do was um, try to level up the Rennington right there. Um, but still, that was, yeah. They drew better than me. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so when it was Gnosis versus Gnosis, why did you use the Hourglass? Your Gnosis wouldn't have died, if I remember right. That's so yeah, that was also probably a mistake by me. I used the I used the Hourglass because I was under I was under the impression that my Gnosis would have died, but the quicksand only gave the minus four, minus zero to the health. Or sorry, to the power and not the health. And so maybe my Gnosis would not have died. And so yes, if my Gnosis was not dying, I probably should not I should not have used that hourglass right there. That was that would was a mistake. Um, that was something that sometimes I make some mistakes like that with. So I really like like where my camera setup is, but it does hurt my game sometimes because where that combat happened, that's actually behind my camera. <laughs> so I I couldn't actually see. I need to like mouse over and look at them larger so I could see that. Um, so I I just kind of like went under the assumption that my Gnosis was dying, but I should have checked there because yeah, I guess I guess my Gnosis probably was not dying there because the quicksand only affected the health. And so, right, so that was that was a bad Ancient Hourglass. So, yeah, that's a good call there. I should not have done that. 
their their Gnosis would have leveled up, so I would not have been able to siphoning strike, but I would have but I would have been able to just save the hourglass for later. And then also because I hourglassed and brought the Gnosis, the, whenever the, my Gnosis came back, it had, uh, you know, it still had the minus four, minus zero and the keyword gone. Um, so I think I probably had the cards to win that last game. Um, but you know, like it's, it was a good game to learn from and that's what we're still doing, right? Like it's still like, that's why you want to keep watching, watching videos, playing games, keep getting more and more experience with these cards. The Devo Devoted Council didn't look too good because it was it was more difficult to level my champions without Azir with just playing the other two. It was kind of difficult leveling the champions. Uh, but, you know, I wanted that some kind of Nexus healing in there. We saw a lot of people playing these kind of decks, you know, playing the Preservariums. Uh, maybe Devoted Council could be that, but that would really hurt us against aggro. Um, I wouldn't mind having some some card draw, whether it's Preservarium or um, maybe just the thing to do. Show on note. I don't think I own any of these. Ma Ruinous Path. Maybe the thing to do is just Ruinous Path. Um, you know, if you slay something, so drain two and draw a card for two mana. Um, maybe that's the, maybe that's the thing to do is instead of Devoted Council, play Ruinous Path. I haven't. I just as you can see, I haven't crafted Ruinous Path yet, so I haven't really had any experience with the card in like mid range decks. Like this card, whenever you don't really care about the two damage to them as much, like how how well this card plays, I don't know. It, it's possible this card like plays really well, and that this that that should be where like instead of devoted council, we should play runes about. So right, so like that's that's a card to think about. Um, that that could be something there. Uh, yeah. So that's um, I could I could see that being an upgrade. I I just not I'm not sure. Um, but yeah yeah I could definitely see that being an upgrade. Um, but I liked our list. I think that our list was, was good and had a lot of good stuff in it. And uh, one of our losses, we just really struggled finding any kind of vulnerable stuff. The Shape Stones did look pretty good. Hourglass wasn't bad. Um, yeah, I think I would want to do that. I think moving forward, I think I would take out the Devo Devoted Council and just try out this card, Ruinous Path. And I think I like this more than the Preservarium, I think. Because I... I think I want that two health. You know, we get that immediate. You either get the immediate two health, or you get an additional card later. Hmm. We we did see like our board gets kind of full, and the Preservarium taking a spot is a downside. I think I would I would go Ruinous Path because Reddington, Reddington Ruin Runner. These cards like with the Overwhelm can do a lot of damage, and then you have like your Shape Stone also. Like you can get a lot of damage in with those, and so like maybe you drain people out with Ruinous Path too. So yeah, so that's that's what I'd recommend. Um, for this. So I'd recommend taking out Devoted Council. I guess I have to craft them. And crafting two Ruinous Paths and putting those in instead. So give that a try. Those of y'all later on YouTube, give that a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of that decision of Ruinous Path for that spot there. Um, I forgot the other ideas. We did get to finally um, advance the Sun Disk enough to restore the Sun Disk for the first time. That was awesome. We got to see the level three Gnosis ruination or uh, animation. That was awesome, and uh, so that was that was cool. So I I really like playing these kind of decks. I like Golden Ambassador and Siphoning Strike and Renekton. Renekton's really fun to play. Gnosis is fun to play. I like this deck. Um, I know I went two and three. I you know I could have maybe done. A little better in some of those games and maybe the ruinous path would help us out a little more because there was like one of those earlier games that golden ambassador did not did nothing sorry um so yeah i think that that could i think that could be a good upgrade and you know i think that this is i think this is a strong ar archetype um it does so we're that two three was real close to a three two four one with just a couple different decisions or card draws here or there all right, but anyway, there we go. That's it here for Renekton Gnosis. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button, leave those comments. Let me know what you think about Sharima, this kind of deck. Um, if you definitely think we need to play Preservarium, and if so, where? Because I, I don't know if we need to. I think curving out and stuff's more important. What do you think about Ruinous Path? I, I'm actually really excited to try this card. I think that this could be a, a really nice card in here. So I'm, I'm really excited about trying this next time. I think that could make a big difference, get that one extra card draw and that drain too. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Renekton Gnosis. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.